I'm going to show you my method for building the body of a neck through guitar. And I'm also going to share some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to keep all of those pieces aligned when it comes time to glue everything together. Let's get started. This piece of curly maple is actually from a tree that I dropped several years ago now on a family member's land. It was needing to come down and they let me have all of the lumber from it. So I have a ton of this curly maple in the shop just seasoning and waiting for the perfect projects to come along. So I'm just I'm going to go through the basic milling steps, clean it up on the joiner, and I'm going to resaw this into two pieces that will make up a drop top for this guitar. So once it's resawn, I go ahead and sandwich these boards the way that I want them to be glued up. So the glue seam is on the same side. Now I'm using what's called a shooting board. And as you see, it can be pretty simple. I'm just using a long sanding block with some rough grit sandpaper to clean up that edge. And I forgot to actually film what it looks like to glue these two boards together. So I guess a panning picture will just have to do. So once the glue is set, I run it through the planer and clean it up, bring it down to rough thickness. And then I'm gonna use the drum sander to bring it down to its final thickness. Since this billet was significantly longer than I needed for the actual top for the instrument, I go ahead and trim it up to rough length at the radial arm saw. If you've been following along with this series, you know I've been using my ShopBot CNC a fair bit for the machining operations on this guitar build. So here is another jig I made for the vacuum table and I have a witness mark on there so that way I can center my piece on this fixture. So the first operation that I'm going to do on the CNC for this portion of the build is a relief carve on the perimeter of this guitar top. This is known as a semi-carved top. So I'm using a couple of different cutters here. One's going to rough it out, one's going to refine the shape, and then I have another cutter that's going to come in and cut the final profile for just the top portion of the guitar top, as well as drill a couple of locating holes that will be used later on. So with this operation finished up, I'm going to spend a fair bit of time sanding and refining that top section because it's going to be a lot more difficult to get to once the guitar body is assembled. So now I shift my focus to the wings of the guitar and that's the area that glues to the left and right hand side of the neck where it goes through the body. And then obviously at the top that I just finished working on, that's going to cover up everything. So from the front of the instrument, it looks like a normal guitar, but when you flip it over, you'll see the laminations of the different materials. So after running the material through the joiner and then now the planer, I'm bringing this material down to its final thickness so that way I can head over to the CNC and do the subsequent operations. So this jig will probably look familiar. Uh, it's the same one that I used to machine the top in the earlier portion of the video. And you'll notice that there are a couple of outlines uh, that I'm going to line up my stock with. And these are just reference marks, so that way I know roughly where the material needs to be put onto this jig. So the next operation that's going to happen here on the CNC is to machine some locating features. Now some people call these dog bones, some people call them barbells. I don't really care what you call it, uh, I just know that it is super helpful for aligning things. After that's done, the machine is going to cut the top profile of each half of the wings. And you see it's also cleaning up the side and that's gonna give me a really nice glue surface. With the locating features cut into the wings of the guitar body, it's now time to make the mating pieces that will help to align everything. So I'm just holding this in place onto the vacuum table with some blue painter's tape and Starbond CA glue. This is my go-to method for smaller pieces. It just makes the process really easy and I don't have to worry about making a special jig to hold things in place. As you probably noticed, the CNC didn't cut all the way through these pieces. And the main reason is because it would be kind of difficult to hold them all in place. And it's really easy to just cut them loose here on the bandsaw. 
So with the dog bones cut free, I'm now ready to do a test fit between the neck, which I made in the previous video, and the two wings that are more or less fresh off the CNC. With the test fit done and everything looking good, I now actually take a minute and I finish up the work on the neck. So I wrap up the inlays, all the fret work, all the final sanding, because that stuff is going to be a lot easier to do without the rest of the body attached to the neck. As I glue all of this together, I wanna to make sure that I don't put too much glue where the heel of the neck and the wings of the body meet, because that's gonna be a difficult area to clean up if I get a lot of squeeze out. Now where those dog bones are, I'm really not concerned about that, and I slap as much glue in there as I need to to get really good coverage because I want those to hold very tightly and pull everything together. Before breaking out the clamps, I drive these dog bones in place as deeply as possible with the dead blow hammer just because it's faster to do it that way than to use the clamps alone, and with PVA glue, you generally have to work a little bit quicker. So a couple of clamps to keep those dog bones pressed in nice and deep, and then a couple of light duty bar clamps to add just a little bit of additional pressure on the sides. Honestly, I think everything would have been sufficiently clamped just from the dog bones alone, but I didn't want to take any chances. So after the glue has cured, I grab a small block plane and just clean up the excess material from those dog bones, and then I sand it flush the rest of the way. Now I grab the top of this instrument and I do a quick test fit. I want to make sure that everything is lining up and that there's just a little bit of clearance underneath the fretboard. I also go ahead and trace this so that way I can cut out the rough profile on the bandsaw. That way it just gives me a little bit more clearance to work with over on the CNC for the next operation. I've added another layer to this jig and that's allowing the guitar to be referenced off of geometry it's already made. This is gonna help me to keep things lined up for subsequent operations. So in this operation, I'm drilling some locating holes and I also cut a groove for the wires from the pickups. My go-to method for gluing up larger areas is to just pour directly from the bottle and use a squeegee to spread out the glue quickly. You remember those locating holes that we cut just a bit ago? Well, this is what they're used for. These allow me to use some dowels to align the top and the body, so that way I can focus on getting things assembled as quickly as possible and cleaning up any glue squeeze out before it comes a problem. And while I'm in the middle of covering up this guitar body with clamps, I'm going to go ahead and say thanks to Bessie for not only being a sponsor for today's video, but being a longtime supporter of the channel and all of my projects. As I get further along in this build, remembering that this is the first time I've built a guitar on the CNC, I'm getting more and more paranoid and just double checking everything. So I'm making sure there's plenty of vacuum to hold this thing in place while the CNC cuts the final profile of the guitar body. Also, the first time the cutter went over the fretboard, I held my breath. Please work, please work, please work. Was a little nervous that it might just decide to take out the bottom of the fretboard. So after the outside is cleaned up, I have the machine doing a roughing pass to clear out the majority of the material inside the pickup cavities. And then it comes back with a smaller cutter and takes off just a light pass to clean things up. With the pickup cavities finished up, the machine then switches back over to a drill mill to pre-drill some holes for the bridge where the strings will go through the guitar body and for the screws that will hold the pickup covers in place. The CNC switches out again to a different cutter to go ahead and pre-drill the holes for all of the control knobs and the toggle switch. But I'm not cutting these holes to final depth at this point and you'll see why in just a minute. Now it's time to flip the pancake and cut some features on the back of the guitar. So here I'm drilling for some string ferrules and next up I'm going to be routing out for the control cavity. Now this is hogging out a lot of material so I use an approach called rest machining. And basically what that means is that you cut away the majority of the material and then after that the rest of what's left behind is cleaned up with a finishing pass. So the reason that I didn't cut the holes for the control knobs and the toggle switch to full depth earlier is because once I got the control cavity to full depth, then I would lose vacuum and the guitar body would lift up off of the table. That would be not good. I switch cutters again and I make a shelf for the cover for the electronics cavity to sit inside of. And then the machine switches back over to that same drill mill that I used earlier to pre-drill some holes so the electronics cover can be held in place. 
And this is probably my favorite part of the machining for the guitar in this phase of the build. It's roughing out a body contour. So I'm using a standard square end end mill to do that roughing. And then I switch out to a ball nose end mill to refine the shape. And what's cool is that this is only gonna require a bit of sanding to clean things up and have it ready for finish. This is really cool to see come together. And up until this point, I've used traditional woodworking tools, uh, routers, and templates to build guitars. So to bring this process onto the CNC has really been a fun journey. And it's not over yet. There's still a lot of handwork to do and a lot of things to dial in before this guitar is ready to play. If you haven't already done so, leave a comment below and let me know which part of this video was the coolest to you. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the series and once the next video is ready, it's gonna be right here for you to check out. Now, uh, if this is the first video that you've seen in the series, go ahead and hit that playlist right there so you can check out the project from the beginning. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, let the sawdust fly and have fun making something.